Okay, we're at the Symphony Live conference, which is taking place in the same location and at the same time as the DrupalCon. And I'm with Fabian, who is the, uh, you, you started Symphony and you're the CEO of uh, uh, Sensio Labs. Okay, uh, what is the role of Sensio Labs with regard to Symphony? Hmm, that's a very good question, actually. <laughs> uh, it's a bit different than the relation between Acquia and Drupal because um, I created Sensio Labs 15 years ago and mm. I created Symphony because we had some need for our customers. Okay. So Symphony started its life as being a tool uh, internally at Sensor Labs to be able to deliver a better website for our customers. And then at some point we decided to open source uh, the framework. Okay. And we did so seven years ago. And what exactly is Symphony? What, or what, what was that itch that you were trying to scratch? Um, that you, that you so Symphony is a framework. So this is a set of tools, a set of components that you can use to build a website. So basically we try to uh, ease the development of any website. Um, and we provide the building blocks for uh, the most common features that you need to build a website. Okay. So is it just a question of reducing the amount of effort that a, that, that a developer has to make or are there other arguments for using Symfony? There are many arguments really. Uh, we can talk about that for an hour if you want. Okay. But Maybe basically, give me, the, give me um, the top argument. The thing is, first, um, we try to not reinvent the wheel. Yeah. So instead of reinventing the wheel again and again, we provide the tools that you can reuse, yeah. first step. The second one um, is using a framework like Symfony helps you implement the best practices. Mm -hmm. okay. And the third one is it gives you a structure so that if you are um, working with a big team of developers, it is quite easy to share codes between the developers. It's quite easy to um, get involved in a project, even if you did not start the project um, initially. So, okay. so is that that's a question about of sharing the code, having a structure, a well-defined structure, where yeah. you can easily find the templates, the controllers, the configuration, whatever. Yeah. So, so do they come in the form of libraries that are written in PHP, or, or how does that work? Yeah, so we have. Um, so you can download the full stack framework, which is really uh, all the libraries we provide uh, for security, for uh, uh, the web, for um, the console. We have more than 30 different libraries actually. Yeah. Uh, so we c you can just pick and choose the libraries you want to use or you yeah. can download the full stack framework. And the full stack framework is really just the glue between all the components. Oh, I see, right. And what's the difference with the approach that you take to the approach that Drupal takes? Because for me, as somebody who's not a developer, I can just click through the interface and do whatever I want. So, out of the box, when you download Symfony, it does nothing. Mm -hmm. right? So there is no interface, there is no backend, there is nothing. So this is really just a low-level architecture of a website. Mm -hmm. And then it is up to the developer to build the website on top of those libraries. So this is really different from uh, a CMS or an e-commerce platform or a CRM system. So we don't have any business logic implemented for you in Symfony. Mm -hmm. You need to implement your own business logic. Okay. And of course, um, Drupal itself being uh, an application, it can be based on a framework. And actually Drupal 8 is going to be built on top of the sum of the Symfony components. Yeah, okay. Um, I've heard some discussion around uh, DrupalCon that the Drupal components, uh, com they're only compatible in the, in the one direction, so, so they use Symfony components, but the Drupal components can't be used as Symfony components. Um, um, I'm not sure what you are talking okay. about really but uh, the thing <laughs> is, <am> I. <laughs> okay no so the thing I, I think that the, the big difference is that we are talking in symphony symphony components are really yeah. low level stuff right? yeah um uh i, I I'm, I'm not really aware of what of which are parts of the okay. drupal components yeah, yeah. Uh, but there the, if they are generic enough yeah. you can probably use them with symphony as well okay and so you've You've been working together with Drupal to introduce uh, parts of Symfony into Drupal 8. Um, how, do, how does that collaboration take place? Are you, col are you collaborating closely with, um, the, with, with Drupal developers or is that something that, that Drupal has done in a kind of unilateral Yeah, so way? we started working together uh, almost two years ago now. Mm. So uh, at that time, they, they were looking, the, the Drupal core developers, they were looking for a solution for um, some of the problems they had uh, with their uh, framework and they found that Symfony actually solved those problems pretty well and that's when we helped them um, 
take the right decision about which components to use and how to use them. So then we help them implement the best practices. And from time to time, we collaborate um, during conferences, for instance, yeah. during the sprints, so that uh, they want to be sure that they are using uh, Symfony, the Symfony components the right way, actually, and yeah. that they are using the best practices. Okay. Yeah. So this is really a two-way collaboration, because now some of the Drupal core contributors, they also contribute to Symfony. Okay. So this is really a cro cross-pollination between uh, the two communities. Okay, so the two communities are broadening their base by collaborating. Yeah. Okay. And then one final question. With um, Drupal moving over to Symfony, presumably that makes things more difficult. Does it steepen the learning curve for, for Drupal developers? And, and how, how should they react to that? Um, positively. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, I think that's great news for, for Drupal uh, for several reasons. But of course, if you know nothing about object orientation, it's going to be a bit harder um, yeah. than it was with Drupal 7. Um, but for the most things, if you are not just clicking uh, in the interface, uh, like just I, yeah, yeah, yeah. not changed really. Okay. It's, it's really just on the lower architecture that a lot of change yeah. just happen. But if you are just using Drupal, installing some modules, and then configuring the modules through the web interface, yeah. then I think you won't be impacted by the. Um, Simply change, okay. except if you are uh, developing some templates because uh, Drupal is probably going to use Twig, which is a templating system yeah. used by Symfony, yeah. and then um, it is totally different ways of uh, doing templates. Okay. So. But but for um, say developers uh, say at Compress, if they're if they're doing actual development, um, so actual PHP programming, d d does that mean for us that there's a bit of catch up that needs to be done or, yeah, or is it only when you dive deep into the core of the code that you, sh you should probably understand the basic concepts of Symfony uh, and it's not really about Symfony concepts it's about best practices in the web development world so you need to understand what a request is what a response uh, you need to understand what dependency injection is um, it's not that difficult and uh, anyways if you want if you are a PHP developer that's probably something you need to learn at some point so it doesn't really matter if it's about Symfony or not. It's really yeah. about implementing the best practices uh, within Drupal. Yeah, OK. And um, Symfony is all open source, so anybody can go and grab yes. it. Okay. Yes. Cool. It is released under the MIT license, so it's a very liberal license. So basically, you can do whatever you want with it. Yeah. OK, good stuff. Well, it was really good to talk to you. Thanks very much for, the, Thank you very for much. your time. And uh, thanks. yeah, thanks. <laughs>